Hey guys, it's Steve here from CG Geek with a new exciting Blender tutorial on how to animate anything in Blender. So Blender is really powerful with its animation tools and you can pretty much animate anything inside of it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to start animating and how to fine tune your animations and make them even better with some simple tips and tricks. So it should be a lot of fun. We're gonna be animating some cubes, we're gonna be animating some shape keys, animating materials, and then even animating a character at the end of the tutorial. So you'll definitely wanna stick around for that. But before we jump into it, I'd like to thank CrowdRender for sponsoring this video. CrowdRender allows you to render from multiple computers at the same time in Blender for free with the ability to connect multiple computers anywhere on your home network, at the office, or with a friend's computer, and even the cloud. They're currently running a 30-day campaign to improve Prove this add-on even more with some great new features, so definitely check out the campaign link in the description below, and you can get some great rewards also by contributing like the Space Visual Effects course. So go ahead and download the free alpha version of CrowdRender right now and start saving time rendering. And if you like it, consider supporting the campaign because I think it's a really good thing and I really want it to happen. Also, stick around till the end of the tutorial where we use CrowdRender to render our finished animation. All right, so using Blender 2.79B, the first thing I wanna show you guys is how to do some basic keyframe animation. But more than just a basic keyframe animation, we're gonna be using some of the tools in Blender to fine tune that animation and show how much control we have over some very simple keyframing. So before I jump into it, I'm gonna switch my tab over to animation because it already has the dope sheet and the graph editor open here. And these are two things that we'll be using to fine tune a very basic, um, I'm gonna call it hard surface animation, because we're just gonna be animating the cube here. So yay for the cube, we actually don't destroy the cube this time, we actually use it. Um, and to use it, I'm gonna first start off by just holding control and pulling it upwards so it's sitting on top of our grid floor there. And then I'm gonna go shift A and add in a plane. And we'll just scale this up to something like 10. So we have a floor to kind of make this look a little bit nicer. And then I'm gonna quick hit N over here and we're gonna change our display settings to have matte cap right here in the shading. And we'll turn on some ambient occlusion too so we can see our animation a little bit nicer. So inserting keyframes anywhere in Blender is super easy. It's just hitting the I key and it brings up all the different keyframes that can be inserted on that object. In this case, we have quite a few, but the main ones we're gonna look at is location, rotation, and scaling. And then you have location, rotation, and location, rotation, scaling all together. This will add a keyframe in all of those different coordinates for the location, rotation, and scale, of course. Um, so I'm gonna grab my cube here, and I wanna put a keyframe on frame one here for our first uh, location and rotation. I'm not gonna be scaling, so just location and rotation. And I'm gonna first pull it over here in the corner a little bit, rotate a little bit, and then I'll hit I and choose location, rotation. So there you go, you added your first keyframe. You can see it right here, it's added in the dope sheet. And right here, it's added into the graph editor. Now I don't want this animation to be too long. So I'm gonna change my end frame to be 100 instead of 250 frames. So change that to 100. Um, and then I'm just gonna jump to about frame 80 here. And this is when the, uh, the cube is gonna stop moving. So I'm gonna grab it. Uh, we'll just pull it over towards the camera and we'll rotate it a bit. Like it, uh, like it maybe it was kicked and kind of spun a little bit. So I'll hit I and choose location rotation again. And you can see we get the keyframe added in the dope sheet up here if I scroll in a little bit to make it larger and in the graph editor down here. But you can tell that they're all done on a nice busier curve. And this is beneficial for some things, but most of the time uh, won't look exactly what you're looking for. So if I play this back now, um, just move to the side here so you can see it. It goes, it ramps up and then it ramps down. And that's because the curve starts off gradual, ramps up, and then wraps down in the rotation and in the location. So that's, you know, that's fine and dandy, but it's not exactly a nice looking animation in uh, terms of realism. So um, before I do any more, I'm gonna change my FPS here to be a bit higher. I think I'll change it to 60 actually. You can see we get a much nicer, smoother animation there. And uh, just to make this look like it was kicked instead of slowly <laughs> moving on its own maybe, um, I'm gonna do some work in the graph editor. But before you would go to the graph editor, you would first tweak your animation in the dope sheet. So this is how you would make it a much faster animation. If you needed to cut down the amount of time between frames, you can grab your keyframes here, or you could drag it out, making a nice slow animation. Um, but if you wanted to actually tweak the movements of it, and not just the length, I'm just gonna leave that there around there, you would do it in the graph editor. So I'm gonna lift this up a bit so we have a little bit more control. And uh, to start, we have some different options in what they call keyframe interpretation. No, interpretation. 
That's a tough word, um, and I'm pretty sure I messed it up. But um, if you hit N here, and you grab one of your Bezier curves here, you can see our keyframe interpretation is set to Bezier, and that's what we have right here. But if we want it to be something that was kicked and then coming to a stop, you might want to change it to something like uh, one of these easing options. So I'm going to try to say maybe cubic, and you can see that that, well, I put that on the wrong axis, but it's, uh, it's doing the right thing. It's kind of speeding up and then slowing down on a curve like you see here. So that's pretty cool. And uh, it looks a little bit better in some cases, except this is kind of the opposite that we're looking for because this is slow and then fast, and I want fast and then slow. So I would control Z that, grab the bottom one here, and give it a cubic. And you can see now it comes fast and then sl uh, slows down. And so if we do that for all of these, if we grab this one and make it cubic as well, and you can see that one's doing the same thing. It starts off a little bit faster, but uh, it's not perfect yet, and that's because there's more keyframes. If I zoom out here, you can see we have this one that goes all the way down to here, and uh, this one is an important one. So I'm going to change this to cubic as well, and you can see now that it's sped up and then coming to a stop. Uh, very nice. If I drop this down, you can see that this is a rotation, and then these two are the location. Um, but maybe something even faster than cubic. So maybe we could try this one and see if we like that better. Or uh, maybe this one. And so you can kind of play with these, but you can get much more fine-tuned animation by using uh, the different interpretation options without even adding any extra keyframes. So I'm going to zoom in here and do the same thing for these. Grab both these and change them to that. And you can see we have a nicer animation where it kind of comes to a stop, starting off with some motion, and then slowing down. So the last kind of fine tuning I wanted to show you guys that you can do in the graph editor is you can see that these starting keyframes are still on a Bezier interpretation. So it's ramping up a little bit more than it would be if it was kicked, for example. So to fix this, you can just grab a handle and you can rotate it to straighten that out. And I'll do the same with this one here. And just rotating these handles, again, we're not adding any extra keyframes, but you're getting a totally different animation, something that looks like it was thrown and coming to a stop. Um, we can do the same thing for the rotation here. You just grab the handle and you rotate it to the same angle that the curve is already at. And you can get sort of a forced throwing effect versus a, a simple, you know, ramp up, ramp down effect. So you can get much better sort of animating effects by just tweaking your, uh, your keyframes here a little bit. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is how you can keyframe pretty much any of these settings you see in Blender. So I'm going to step out of the animation tab now, back to the default here. You can see our cube's still moving there like we animated earlier. I'm just going to pause that now, and we'll jump to a new layer to do some more experiments. And I'll hit Shift A and add in our cube right back there. We can turn on our fancier settings here as well, if we want to look a little bit nicer. All right, so you can pretty much keyframe anything in Blender, like I just said. All these settings here, and especially in your, um, say, Materials tab, or your physics tab even, all these settings are keyframable. So uh, to kind of give an example of this, I'm gonna go for a shape key. And I'm gonna animate a shape key to show you guys the kind of control you can have over animating any setting in Blender. So I'm gonna start with my cube and I'm gonna give it some subdivisions. So I'm gonna hit W and hit subdivide. And we'll subdivide this bad boy about three times, eh, maybe four. And uh, we can close our toolbar off then, hit tab to get out of edit mode. And I'm gonna hit the plus key on shape keys and this gives us our basis. This is basically our default pose, and it needs to be there. So we're going to add another one now. And this one, we're going to call circle. So we're going to have Blender animate between a square and a circle using shape keys. So this is really cool. And uh, I think this is going to be a tip that you guys uh, will enjoy. So to do this, with this shape key selected, this is going to be the one that's modified. If we go into edit mode now and make some changes to it, it's going to be changing this one, but not the basis. So I'm going to show you how you can animate this, but uh, first we need to make this a circle. So to do this, I'm just going to hit space and start typing sphere. And there's an option that says transform to sphere. If you just choose this and then move your mouse, you can see that in the bottom there, we have it set to one on the sphere. So you just click right there. Okay. And uh, we can choose smooth shading as well over here. So it looks a little bit cleaner uh, right here, smooth shading. And then if we change this value here, you can see our square gets changed into a circle using the shape key. And of course, like I said, because all these values can be animated, I can hit I on frame one and then scroll to frame 100 and change it to one and hit I again. 
And now if I play this back, you can see that our animation is changing to a cir or sphere. And to show you how cool this is, I'm going to jump back to our animation tab, where you can see we have our keyframes here, and you can control it on a graph just like before. I'm going to choose one of these imp uh, interpolation, <laughs> that word I can't say, um, techniques to change this uh, animation a bit more. So the one I'm going to choose is, let's choose bounce. And you can see now that it kind of bounces to a circle. And I mean, how cool is that? But it's coming a little bit slower. So maybe I grab this keyframe up here, pull it in a little bit closer, maybe make it all in, happen in one second. And you can see we have that kind of blobby turning into a circle. And that's just super cool, I think. So a really easy way to get some really nice looking animation effects in Blender. And you could try something different than bounce. You could try elastic. Um, elastic happens at quite a bit faster though. So maybe you drag the animation out a bit longer and you can see it, uh, it's doing its thing. And maybe even longer yet, we can go 200 frames, grab our keyframe and uh, just zoom in out here. I'm just hitting G and dragging it down all the way out to frame 200. And you can see you have that effect going. Elastic happens a little too fast in my opinion though. So I would have stuck with, uh, I would have stuck with our last one, maybe 80 frames and then setting it back to bounce. But that's how you do it guys. So that's how you animate any setting in Blender. So with our shape key animation here, I want to show you the next segment, which is going to be how to animate materials in Blender. You can animate materials and nodes to change colors and do all kinds of cool things um, as well by using Blender's keyframing options. So to show you guys how to do this, I'm going to go to our node or our material nodes here, and I'm going to switch to cycles render, and then we'll hit new, and this will bring up our material settings. Um, I'm just going to give it a base color of red, and we can give it our viewport color of red as well just so we can see what that's looking like. Um, I guess it's not gonna update unless I change this to material right there. So we have our bright red. Maybe if I change it to, well, rendered, yeah, but textured, can I get any sort of shading? There we go. If we change it to texture, we get some shading. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys how you can animate this color to be a different color. So very simple, we're just gonna split our window here, open up the node editor, hit N to close that off. And you can see we have a diffuse going into our surface output. I'm just going to hit shift A, add in a shader, mix shader, drop it right in there and I'll connect it up. We'll duplicate our diffuse and we'll drop this into the bottom and I can change this color now to be blue. And if I tweak this now, as you can see over here in our preview, it's not going to update in the real time here unless I change this to rendered, but it's happening a little bit slow now, but you can see we get a purple color. Um, if I give ourselves a little bit of world color, just hit use nodes and make this brighter so we can see this nicely, you can see that we have a purple color. Now, if you animate this, you can see it changes from red or blue, and then of course purple in the middle. And just like everything else, this can be animated. So I could go I, hit a keyframe at frame one, jump to the end, change the value to one, hit return, hit I, and we have that changing. Now if I switch back to my animation tab, you can see we have our material settings here on the cube as well. And if I grab that, you can see that it's showing up right here. Now maybe this other keyframe is getting in the way, in which case you can drop this one down, turn the little eyeball off right there so it's not visible. And we could just work on our material and we could give this the same sort of um, interpretation by giving it a, uh, a bounce or something. So the color changes in like a bounce sort of, uh, sort of look and that can be pretty cool on itself. So you can see we get some nice randomizing colors as it's changing with the shape. So that's how you animate materials, just as simple as everything else in Blender, and it gives you a lot of control to come up with a lot of cool animated uh, materials. All right, so now that you've learned some very basic keyframing techniques, I wanted to finish the tutorial off with showing you guys how to do some character animation. I mean, it wouldn't be a beginner animation tutorial if we didn't cover some characters. So uh, I'm going to use a model here. It's not one of my own. It's uh, from a gentleman off BlendSwap. Um, I'll put a link in the description where you can download it and follow along. But we're going to do some basic animation now with this character. He's already rigged and ready to go. And uh, all right, so let's do it. So before I start animating, it is extremely helpful to have a little bit of reference footage. So I took a little bit of footage myself, just uh, looking like a fool out in my front yard um, to kind of copy my movements so I can put them to the animation. So I'm going to quick open that up right now so you can kind of start blocking out your animation with a reference to follow. So I'm going to just hit N, open up my, uh, my thing here. Let me turn that on for you guys. 
so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, then I'm going to hit background images and add image. I'm going to open it up. It's going to be a movie clip, but uh, we can just leave that image and it'll automatically change when we open it. So I'm just going to open up my reference footage here real quick. And uh, it's just me, like I said, being a fool in my front yard, uh, jumping around. <laughs> All right, we want to change that to movie clip now and not camera clip. I guess I do have to open it there. Hmm. Will that work? There we go. And now it's moving with me. And so I'm just jumping around. It's this guy sitting here kind of having a thought, tapping his toe, and then boom, an idea comes to him. And then he goes kind of, wait a minute. And nope, that won't work. And goes back to tapping his toe and sitting there thinking. So this is about approximately 340 frames long. So I already have the timeline set up to that here. And uh, I'm just going to quick kind of position my uh, goofy video over my character. So it's again uh, in perspective and scale. So I'm going to slide it over here by moving this value. And then if you hold shift, you can kind of move it a little bit slower and smoother. And then I'm going to take the scale of it down a little bit, if I can here. Um, let's see, size right there. Scale it down quite a bit. And then pull it over there. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Pull it down. And uh, it's a little too small on the scale. So just kind of fit it, fit it to your character real quick. Something like that will be close enough. And uh, so let's start by blocking out our animation. So blocking basically means jumping to every large movement. So you don't want a lot of basically movement between frames. That makes things look very fake and very amateurish. You want your characters to kind of hold a pose, and then hold another pose, and then hold another pose with just small movements in between those sort of major movements, as the major movements are going to make things look a lot um, more cartoony and animated the way you want. So blocking is kind of just setting up those major movements, and then we're going to come back and kind of fine-tune the animation. So to start, we're just going to grab our major controller keyframes. So all the other bones are already hidden, so we just kind of have our controller bones. And I'm going to turn on automatic keyframe insertion right here. So this is basically just going to insert a keyframe every time I move an object in Blender. So instead of hitting I and inserting a keyframe like we normally do, it will do it for us. So I'm going to start by just grabbing his waist here and kind of make him a little bit more slouched by pulling him down. Then I'll grab this bone here on his toe. And I'm going to, oh, let me zoom down here, this foot here, kind of pull him over. And uh, sometimes it's helpful to split your window. I can hit T to close off the toolbars and have one of them in view so you can see if it's lined up. And then another one where you're moving around to move the, uh, the bones. So for example, I can see here when it's kind of lined up over there just by tweaking this. So I'm going to pull him over here a little bit, and I'm going to rotate his uh, foot along the z-axis so he's kind of holding the same pose. This foot can be over here a little bit. Whoops. Make sure it's the right foot. Thank you. And then just kind of pull this one over a bit as well. And now we have to grab his hand. So I'm going to grab his hand here. We're going to rotate it around. Grab it. Rotate some more. And uh, put his hand over his mouth like so. And then we have to grab the elbow bone and kind of pull that down so it's fitting with uh, with the animation. Somewhere around there would be good. And then of course this hand is on his hip. So we're going to grab that hand, kind of pull it down, rotate it. Some people in, uh, um, prefer using the or, uh, orbital kind of rotation here for rotating bones. So maybe you prefer choosing this option right here and kind of rotating your bones around to get some... Uh, it might help a little bit in, if you're doing a lot of rotating to have that kind of control. So I'm just kind of placing his hand on his hip here. And I prefer this one, but uh, depending on what you like, you can uh, go back and forth. I do prefer the uh, this one. So I'm just going to rotate it, kind of pull him in here. And like I said, these are just the, the basic poses, so nothing too fancy right now. And uh, then his head's going to be kind of cocked down. And now we can kind of fine-tune a few of the fingers just to get the right pose. Um, I want these to be kind of... Um, bent more than the one finger here. So I'm going to grab both these and scale a little bit. And this will kind of curve him in a little bit. So he's kind of in a thinking pose right here. We can pull that hand down just a little bit. Maybe tilt the head down just a little bit more. Like he's deep in thought. And then these fingers as well, kind of wrapping around his waist a little bit. I'm just going to grab all three of them by holding shift, right clicking. And we can scale those in a little bit. I want to scale them in. Like it's just kind of sitting here on his hip. And pull his hand back there a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Good enough for me. And that will be our first block, blocked out pose. So now if I bring up our dope sheet, you can see that we have all these keyframes on keyframe one. 
And because he doesn't make much movements on keyframe one, I can pull this elbow bone out a little bit here if I grab it. Just kind of match the, uh, the goofball in the background there. And uh, so I'm gonna grab all these keyframes and I'm gonna shift D them and pull them over until I make a major movement. So right now it's just small movements tapped my foot and then starting right around here, right around frame 85 or so, I start to move more uh, exaggeratedly, <laughs> exaggerated. So, um, <laughs> why did I come up? I come up with my own words sometimes. Uh, exaggerated is what I'm looking for. And I'm just gonna grab all these keyframes and drop it right at that point. So we have still movement until here. And then the next blocked out pose is going to be, boom, he's got an idea. So now at this point, we can make some uh, adjustments because we have two keyframes holding the, the first pose. This one, I'm gonna start with the hips again. He, uh, he gets really excited, so he's gonna maybe be leaning back a little bit and at full extension, and his head is gonna be kind of tilted upwards triumphantly. I'm gonna grab his hand, and his hand is gonna be pointing upwards, like bum bum bum, he's got an idea. So I'm gonna pull his hand up all the way here. I'm gonna rotate these fingers down a little bit more and scale them down a little bit more as well to rotate them as much as we can, like so. A little bit of rotating. And uh, hold that pose right there. This hand has to be kind of shooting out behind him like he's like he's uh, holding a pose. And uh, we can extend these fingers out now. So I'm going to hit scale to kind of extend him out. Rotate his hand back a little bit. Like so. And maybe, maybe some of these will be in a little bit. Like he's a little bit pointing down here as well. Something like that looks kind of good. And uh, his feet have to, uh, as, if you see here as we scroll through, his feet have to kind of... Um, jump out a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to grab some of these feet and uh, move them out. So I'm going to pull this foot over here. And as you can see, we have to pull the waist down just a little bit. I'm going to pull this foot over there. So this is enough to work with now. This is a basic animation. I'm not going to go through the whole thing as it would take a little too long. But you can see he's sitting here, not doing anything. And then he's boom, he's got an idea. So I'm going to work with these two uh, or three keyframes to kind of fine tune it now. So first of all, in this area here, well, we'll come back to this. We'll start at the beginning. Why not? So now that we have the basic keyframe, he's holding a pose. Let's start with that foot. That foot should be tapping. So in keyframe one, we'll uh, rotate it um, just up a little bit. So we'll rotate it up just a little bit. And again, I'm going to split my window here so I can see what it looks like right here, and then I can also work in 3D space. So his foot's rotated up, and we'll just kind of scrub along here a little bit, and it comes up even more, right about to that point. So I'm gonna rotate it up some more, and then go along some more. Kind of holds that pose a little bit, so I'll rotate a little bit more, and then, boom, it comes down. So we'll rotate down. And then scroll through a little bit more, and his foot slowly comes back up. So what I can do now is I have these four keyframes. I can grab them all and shift D them, and we can kind of pull these to line up right with the, the animation now. So I'm just doing the same thing again, uh, except this time it's a little bit faster of a toe tap, so I'm just gonna move my cursor here, scale a little bit, and this is gonna scale all my keyframes down to my cursor, which is gonna essentially make it happen faster. So I need to do that a little bit more, maybe just pull it back a little bit. And so it's coming down at the right time, and then it's going back up already. So I'm gonna do that again, Shift D, pull these out, and as you can see, he's following it up and then down. Again, it needs to be scaled a little bit, so I'm just going to scale these keyframes down. And it comes up and comes down. And then again, 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 you guys get the idea. He's just tapping his foot up and down. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, something like this can be a little bit different. Um, but this one comes up and down, and then boom, he has his idea. So that's all the toe tapping we really need. And now if you play this through, you can see that we have boom, 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 a nice toe tapping animation. All right, so that's good for the toe tapping. But what about the finger scratching? He's gonna be kind of scratching his chin, thinking about this a little bit. So uh, frame one here, if I hit Z, you can see my uh, character in the background here a little bit more. And uh, he needs to be kind of scratching his, uh, his maybe his uh, upper lip. So I'm gonna scale his finger out a little bit for frame one, and then we'll move along. And you can't really see what uh, what I'm doing. So I'm going to make this viewport up here wireframe so I can see through it. And then I'll do the animating down here. And uh, so he's kind of going, hmm, hmm, hmm. 
You know what? Actually, he's not really scratching. <laughs> I should have been scratching my, my upper lip. That would have been good, but I'm not. So instead, I'll just make it uh, animated in here, and I'll kind of animate his scratching to his toe. So I'm going to just pull this down here so I can see what his toe's doing. And when his toe's up, his finger will kind of be scratched in a little bit. Something like that. And uh, maybe a little bit of hand movement as well. And then when his toe comes down, boom, he'll be kind of scratching out. So just kind of going in rhythm with his toe tapping. Toes up, he's scratching in. Toes down, his fingers out. So you guys kind of get the idea. We're just going to finish this out real quick. Scrubbing through our timeline, just using my arrow keys to move nice and fast. And up, fingers in. And down, fingers out. And this is where he gets his idea. So now you can see we have a little bit of finger movement going on. And maybe just a little bit of head movement along this time. So these are very subtle movements. Nothing nothing too major. But uh, maybe he's kind of bobbing his head just a little bit as he's, as he's um, thinking here. So I'm going to actually move keyframe 1 a little bit more rotated like that. So now he's just kind of, hmm, wobbing his head back and forth. These can be a little bit more up to your imagination as my character's not moving too much here. So I'm just going to do a little bit of back and forth rotating here, like so. And then if I play that back, you can see we have a little bit of, hmm, thinking, and then he's got this idea. Uh, not too bad. Um, you can make a little bit of waist movement as well to kind of fill out your keyframe even better. If you look at me, I'm kind of going up and down a little bit in my breathing almost. So your waist can kind of control your breathing. Like maybe here, he should be up just a little bit, and then down just a little bit. These are very subtle keyframes, so too much goes a long way. So I'm just doing very subtle, and then down a bit, and then up a little bit, down a little bit, and so forth. And that looks pretty good. And then right before he jumps, he might want to go down a little bit. So he's kind of preparing for that hop. And if we play this back, it should look like he's thinking. And then, boom, his idea. So it's looking pretty nice. We got some nice sort of keyframe movement going on here. Um, you could give a little bit of movement to his other hand here if you want to not look so stagnant. Maybe just at least following the hip animation here a little bit. So this might be going up and down with the, uh, the hip. So you could do that if you wanted. But um, I'm going to move on to the next sort of fine tuning here. So we can keep this uh, not looking too repetitive if you get the idea. All right, so there's just a little bit of hand movement, so you can see how you do that. Um, so the next thing is going to be kind of fine-tuning a jump here. So as you can see, with the two blocking poses, he doesn't really jump in here, and I think a jump would be really good because he's kind of jumping to his, uh, to his thought. So right at the peak of his jump here, I'm going to take his waist, and I'm going to pull him up in the sky. Um, and I think we'll grab his hands as well. His hands should probably follow along with this. So right at the peak of his, his enthusiasm, he's jumping up in the air here. Um, we can take Z out of here now, so that's solid. So I'm going to pull him up in the sky a bit, and maybe a little bit over to the right. So you can see he kind of goes, hmm, boom, ba -da bum idea. Now this keyframe, if we wanted to maybe move it a little bit further, I feel like it's a little too soon. I would just go up to my dope sheet here, unselect everything, and then select all the keyframes underneath my cursor. We can pull him a little bit tighter. So if I play that through in real time, he goes boom, like he's got an idea. It still is a little bit slow, so I might grab the keyframes, the blocking pose right before it here, and pull it out a little bit, so it happens a little bit faster. And so now he's boom, 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 and that looks a little bit better, maybe even a little too fast. So we have a pretty nice looking pose here as he proudly jumps to his position here. But uh, there's something that could still be improved. And for example, first of all, let's bring his knees up a little bit when he jumps. So we're just going to go to where all the other keyframes are here. And we'll pull these up a little bit by hitting G. And uh, whoops, those are the toes. The, the toes should actually be kind of down a little bit, but that doesn't really matter. We can just grab our, our heels, pull them up a little bit, maybe rotate them down a little bit like he's jumping in midair. So you can see we have that. Ba boom and it's looking, uh, looking pretty good. Whoops, I accidentally added an extra keyframe. 
make sure you're over the cursor there before you put another keyframe in. All right, I'm just tweaking a little bit. So we have a nice little hop. Now, um, this is where you could also use your graph editor to save on keyframes and make this a little bit more fine-tuned. So I'm going to split this up real quick. Go to our graph editor. And what I want to do is I want to animate his hip bone and his feet, like I said, um, maybe I said, I don't know, <laughs> to, uh, to kind of bounce when he hits the ground. So we can do this with the interpolation options like we were using earlier in the tutorial um, on bones. So I'm going to turn off the ones that we don't need here. I'm only going to be changing whatever makes it go up and down. And I believe it's actually the Y location here. Yes, it is. Um, it might be the Z location if you're using a different rig, but with the rotation of these bones, it's the Y here. And so I'm going to grab this bone, and as you can see, it's a curve where he's landing. And if we take our interpolation by hitting N and changing it to, say, bounce, you could get that same sort of um, cartoony animation where he kind of bounces boom, to the ground. And uh, that just makes things look even better, in my opinion, if you're going for that kind of cartoon animation. So I'm going to do the same thing with the feet here. I'll grab his foot, grab the Y location, and you can see that um, actually... This bone is going along the y-axis this time, and it is the Z bone for this one, I think. Let me just make sure. If I move this, uh, actually, that's not really going up and down either. Maybe it's the X location we want to animate, or the Y. Let me see which one is moving at the right direction. Can't really see from this view. I'm gonna switch over here, grab the Y bone here. No, nope. well, okay, it's moving that side to side. I want whatever's gonna move it up and down. Not that one. Let's try this one. All right, it is a Z location this time. All right, so we're gonna grab the Z location. I'm gonna change it to be bounce as well. You can see we got that interpolation going on there. We'll do the same thing here. Grab the Z location bone and give it the bounce. So now if we play our animation back, you can see when he jumps, he's got sort of that uh, the cartoon animation look. Now I made a little bit of mistake here on the left foot here. I have to not put the interpolation on the first keyframe here if I bring up my properties tab. We want this one to still be keyframed. So I'm just going to change the interpolation here to be busier. And I want to grab the one at the peak here and change that to be bounce so it happens after his jump. And now we can see we have a bounce and a jump. And it actually looks uh, looks pretty decent. It goes up and it kind of bounces to a stop. Now again, I still think that maybe <laughs> this could be moved a little bit. And that's why you want to use the dope sheet for moving keyframes because it's super easy. And uh, so this way is we get the best looking results. And just to kind of work that animation, you want to make sure he's bouncing at the right time. So it's a little bit of a hop and then he's good. But um, So and then the one other thing that we might want to do is right before the jump, so I'm going to pull this over a little bit, just for fine tweaking, is make his hips go down right before they go up because he's kind of crouched here for a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing with his hips and his feet. I'm going to grab his hips and his feet at the same time. I'll just pull him down a little bit. So he's kind of crouching. I'm going to pull hips down a little bit more. So he's kind of crouching a little bit right before his, his jump. So he's like, ooh, there's the idea. And then he jumps. So that just gives a little better looking results, I think. Maybe pull hips down even more to exaggerate it. And the feet can't be moving until he goes so we want to actually grab his feet here. His feet can just stay the same, these two, and we can just grab these. And if you just overlay them onto the keyframe, it will automatically overwrite. So now he just crouches down and then bounces up. And you have that little bit of bounce effect to make it look kind of cartoony, and I think it looks pretty good. So let's close our background image now and see what we've come up with. And if I switch to uh, just a window here, shift space, hit Z, and let's play this through with Alt A. So he's sitting there and uh, thinking, <laughs> and then bounce. He's got an idea. And that's looking pretty good. You can see that we're playing back actually a little faster than we should be. Um, I think I set it to 60, but it's playing a little faster for whatever reason. But uh, if the animation is a little too fast, you can always scale all the keyframes at once to slow it down. But um, let me let me collapse this down a little bit so we can have nice a nice big view of it. There is our animation. Um, so that's about it, guys. That's going to be the basics. You could continue this on if you want as a little bit of a project and finish it out to the rest of the video. But that's going to be it because um, I've showed you all the techniques and tips to how you do it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. And it's time for the last part of this tutorial, which is going to be how to render it 
and we're going to render it like I said at the beginning of the tutorial with crowd render. So I have a finished animation already here and I'm going to quick show you guys how to set it up and render your animation using crowd render with two different PCs at the same time. Maybe you have an extra laptop or something. You can pull over, you can uh, render it on both of them to essentially get twice the speed um, rendering on two different computers. Okay, so I have the uh, the finished animation here ready to be rendered, and I'm going to show you just how quick and easy it is to do with CrowdRender. So first off, you don't want to head over to CrowdRender.com, and uh, you can see the website right here, and you're just going to want to switch over to Downloads here, create a free account, and then you'll be able to download CrowdRender. I already have it downloaded, so I'm just going to close that off now. And once you have it downloaded, you're going to go into your user preferences here, you're going to go into Add-ons up on top, and then you'll choose Install Add-on from File, and I'm going to grab your crowd render and download that right there. Again, I already have it installed, so I'm just going to show you now how you go into your user preferences. One more time, I'm going to switch to your add-ons, and you're just going to look under render. So you can go right here and pull out render. You'll see crowd render right here. You're going to want to check that box, let it, uh, let it open. Once it's uh, open like that, you can close it off. And you want to save your blend file. And as soon as you enable it, you'll see over here, if I scroll down, that we have crowd render. If I drop that down, you see we have a start button, and that's basically going to start um, the crowd render network and allow it to be found by other computers or find other computers as well. And you're going to want to hit start. So I'm going to first change it to CPU rendering because I'm just going to render with CPU. It does work on GPU though, and I'm going to click start. So you can see that you have a few settings here, and it says up here that the render server is starting, and then it connected to the node render server, and it's ready. So that's all you have to do. Now, you're going to want to jump over to your other PC real quick. You're going to want to open up the same version of Blender, install the same version of the add-on, and do the exact same steps by going into your user preferences and enabling that add-on as well. Also, don't forget to click Start in the Crowd Render tab, as this will make the second PC available to render on the network. So, to add your second PC to the render nodes, you're just going to click Add. You're going to type out the name of the PC. If you're not sure what the name of your PC is, you just go to your control panel and right there in the system information, it will tell you exactly what your PC name is. So just type out desktop line. And for me, it's a unique number. It's going to be different for everyone. I'm just going to type out the number of my second PC here. All right. Once that's typed out, whoops, I did type that right wrong. There we go. Desktop. And then all you have to do is click that sync button right there and it will connect to the server. So once that's clicked, it'll say connecting to nodes now. And after giving it a moment, it should say synced, depending on the size of your project, as it has to upload it basically to the other PC real quick. But it usually it's pretty fast, and usually your blend file isn't that large. Uh, especially in this case, it's only a few megabytes. So once it's synced, um, you're ready to render. So you want to double check your render settings real quick. Make sure you're happy with your resolution. Maybe even do a test render real quick by just hitting F12 and uh, seeing what you're getting. And you can see, whoops, not getting what I want. And that's just because I need to turn on both layers here so I can have my background layer. And then you can see that, okay, I'm getting the kind of render I want. I'm ready for it. So I'm going to hit escape now. So if at any point the project becomes unsynced, you'll just want to click resync and it will automatically re-upload the project and sync it right up. So once you're satisfied with the settings and you've done a few test renders, you're ready to click the render animation button and sit back and watch CrowdRender do the work on both your computers at the same time. So it kind of goes through an algorithm and determines which computer is more powerful and will distribute the project between the computers evenly, giving you optimal render times. So it's super cool and it's a really a great project and I really hope that it gets funded more so we get this add-on growing to be even something bigger and uh, it's a great resource. So definitely go check out the campaign that's going right now. Smash that uh, contribute button and uh, let's make this project happen. Okay, and our animation finished here. And to give a little example of how much faster it was with CrowdRender, um, my second PC that I'm using is a Intel 8-core 16-thread. And of course, I'm rendering on Threadripper here with a 16-core 32-thread CPU. So adding another computer cut down the, uh, the render time about 6 seconds. I was getting about 22 seconds with both of them. And this is one uh, rendered just with this PC and it's about 28. So you're cutting out about six seconds with just one extra PC. And if you add more and more PCs, of course, your render time is gonna be cut down even more. It is still an alpha though, so you will run into some bugs, but uh, it's quickly getting better and more stable. So uh, if I show you right here, you can see all of our finished frames and I put them together in an animation here right now. But if you guys wanna see how to do this yourself, it's quite simple. You have all your frames now, all saved onto your desktop or wherever you chose to put them. Um, and if I just create a new file here, reload the startup file, 
you just want to quick punch in your settings that the footage was rendered at. So it's going to be 1080p, 60 FPS. And then you just jump over to your video editor. And you're going to change the timeline to be the right length, which is 340 frames, of course. Then you just go Shift A, add an image. Then you go to that folder where you have uh, your animation frames. You're going to hit A to select all of them. Import image strip or add image strip as it says there. And you can see right now you have all your frames put together in your animation. If I play this back, you can see we have it playing through about 20 FPS right here. Um, and we can save this out as a movie now. So I'm just going to go default. We're going to go to our output. We're going to change it from PNG to FFmpeg video. We'll change the encoding to be H.264 MP4. And that's basically all you have to do. You choose your output. Um, I'm just going to choose animation folder again here accept and then you can render animation and it'll fly through and just stitch all those frames together in a nice animation so this is the proper way to render animations as it uh, is going to save time in case there's a render error when you're rendering individual frames versus all of them together so it's definitely the right way to uh, render an animation thanks for watching and uh, definitely check out the crowd render campaign that's running right now for the next 30 days and uh, i'll see you guys in my next blender tutorial so bye bye Bye. Adios, amigos. See you later, alligator.